7 insane techniques used by secret service. There's more of them than you know. The president usually travels with a small team of security service agents, which leaves many people assuming that they're quite a small operation, but that couldn't be further from the truth. The handful of agents shadowing every move the president makes are just some of the 6,500 other employees in the Secret Service. Around 3,200 are special agents, some of whom make up the Presidential Protection Division, while others carry out essential missions of investigation and protection. Approximately 1,300 are uniformed division officers, who secure venues and facilities for those under the protection of the Secret Service. And finally, a huge 2,000 employees are made up of technical, professional, and admin personnel. They can protect anyone. Now, you know that the Secret Service is duty-bound to protect the President, but they're actually authorized to protect an incredibly select list of high-ranking individuals as well. At the top of this list is the President and the Vice President, who both have special agents permanently assigned to them. And this is followed by the president-elect, and vice-president-elect or any other official next in line in the order of presidential succession. Protection also extends out to the first family, former presidents, young children of former presidents, visiting heads of states, and other distinguished figureheads, such as the Pope. It sounds like a super stringent list, but as it turns out, anyone can be protected by the service. It may sound strange, but the president just has to designate an executive order declaring so. The president is never alone. Being part of a protective detail means following the president everywhere they go, and they really mean everywhere. They stick with them from the doctor's office to their bathroom breaks, because they just can't risk the possibility of someone catching the president with their trousers down. It may sound a little too close for comfort, but when Ronald Reagan was in office dealing with prostate problems, reports suggest an agent was present for all his appointments, and I mean all. For every rectal exam and even colonoscopy, an armed agent was ready to take out the doctor if he thought even for an instant that he might be a threat. Seems like that poor doctor really got a bum deal. The president has no choice. Being constantly surrounded by agents probably makes the president feel incredibly safe, although not even being able to visit the bathroom on their own must get phenomenally frustrating. But no matter how much the president might crave privacy, the Secret Service legally cannot leave them alone. According to the laws set out by Homeland Security, protection of the president and vice president by the Secret Service is mandatory. So, even if they ordered their dedicated protection details to leave, the agents would have to stay. They keep it coded. There are plenty of perks to being the President of the United States, from leading the free world to living in the White House. But one that's undeniably cool is getting to choose your own Secret Service code name. Agents present the President, Vice President, and their families with a list of pre-approved terms. Each family is given a set that begin with the same letter and choose individual code names that resonate with them personally. President Donald Trump's code name, for example, was Mughal, referring to his business empire. Melania Trump was Muse, assumingly because she always looked like she was musing over something she didn't quite understand. President Joe Biden is sticking to his 2016 vice presidency codename Celtic, embodying his Irish-American heritage. They don't just protect the president. A lot of people know that the Secret Service was established way back in 1865 by the one and only President Abraham Lincoln. But their job back then wasn't to protect the president, as you can probably tell from President Lincoln's untimely demise. They were initially called the Secret Service Division of the Department of the Treasury and were responsible for tracking down counterfeiters. While they no longer belong to the Department of the Treasury, they do still have a duty to protect America's financial and payment systems from criminal exploitation. It's a duty so important that in the official 2018 Homeland Defense Doctrine, the Secret Service's mission to safeguard America's financial infrastructure was put before the President's protection. They hire the bad guys. 
When it comes to financial cybercrime, how exactly is the Secret Service meant to catch some of the cleverest hackers in the world? Well, sometimes they actually hire them. At least, that was the case with criminal mastermind Alberto Gonzalez. In 2008, Alberto was arrested for the theft of some 130 million credit card numbers, which was the largest retail store theft in history at the time. He was sentenced to 20 years in prison, but later claimed that he'd been working as an informant for the Secret Service the entire time. He said he'd been hired to help track down bank card thieves, which he was paid a whopping $75,000 a year to do.